This Army Ranger inlay looks complicated, but I'll show you how simple it really is using Vectrix software and why I'm making this piece just before Veterans Day. Today, we are doing what is known as a V-carve inlay using a CNC and a V-shaped router bit. We first carve our design out of the main body of the cutting board, or the female part of our design. We then take a mirror image of our design, and using the exact same V-bit, we cut a plug out of a different species of wood. This plug will then fit perfectly into the main body of the cutting board, resulting in a perfect inlay. If you're new to inlays or CNC, stick with me. I'll break it down step by step, even if you've never tried this before. You will need to be using Vectric software version 12.0 or later. This is a newer feature I'm going to be showing today that is only in this 12.0 version. I'm using Vectric Aspire, but you could also be using Vectric VCarve Pro. Now, this piece means a lot to me. I'll, I'll tell you more throughout the video. Um, you, you may not be aware, both my wife and I served in the military, and Veterans Day is just around the corner. First thing we're going to do, set up the size of your project. This one is 12 by 18, and then you're going to bring in your graphics, preferably an SVG file. Here you see me selecting the rectangle tool. I simply draw a rectangle to match the outer dimensions of my project. I'm gonna use this for a few different steps throughout this process. What I'm doing here is first establishing that outside rectangle, and then I'm gonna offset it by a couple of inches. And this is giving me the exact dimensions that I want my graphic to fit inside of. This just helps me visualize how my Ranger tab in this uh, situation is going to look in comparison to the size of my cutting board. There's other ways to do this. Um, the graphic, you can get the dimensions right off it. You can plan ahead and know exactly what your numbers are. Being a visual person, I like to just set it up this way, make sure nothing seems too extreme, and then I'll, you'll see me just delete this box that I'm using as a size reference. Here I'm moving to the Sheets tab on the left side of the screen. The way I work is if I put a new piece of wood on the CNC machine, it gets a new sheet in the Vectric software. So I have two in this project. I have the Walnut cutting board, which is the female portion of the project, and I have the Maple plug, or the male portion of the project. So I'm going to create two sheets, I'm going to label them accordingly, and you'll see that the software will then place files on the designated sheet as we need it to. Now you can see our file set up on the left hand side. The blank sheet is the maple plug and on the right hand side is the walnut pocket sheet and that has our ranger tab graphic on it. Now we just got to set up some tool paths and get to cutting. Okay so I'm going to double click on the walnut pocket sheet. This activates that sheet. I'll then select the graphic and go over to the tool paths menu and select vcarve inlay tool path. This is that new tool path in versions 12.0 and later. I select the pocket depth of 0.25, a glue gap of 0.02, and a surface gap of 0.02. When making a V-carve inlay, you need these three settings to be right. The pocket depth, it's how deep you cut the hole. The glue gap is a little space at the bottom of the plug for the glue, and the surface gap is a thin space on top so you can cut the excess off the plug. These settings make sure your inlay goes together easily, holds tight with the glue, and looks smooth and professional when you're done. Now I'm selecting my VIT, which is going to be a CIC, or cutting it close, 60 degree three flute V-bit. These bits are fantastic for inlays. I've become a big fan of them. I'm going to keep the settings as they are supposed to be. And now I've got my 60 degree V-bit selected. You see I have the box check use clearance tool. I now need to select that tool because I don't want the V-bit to do all the work. This is going to be a spiral bit that will do some hogging out, kind of cleaning out some extra material before the V-bit goes in and does what it needs to do. 
Right. Make this a little bigger so you can see it. And my choice for the clearance bit is going to be another CIC or cutting it close bit. For this, I'm going to use UC2175. That is a 1 8 inch diameter upcut spiral bit. You can use a quarter inch, but in a lot of inlays, you're going to find out this doesn't remove much material. The eighth inch will get in there and do a lot better job. I'll show you how that's going to look. All right, we're going to do a quick double check. We've got our pocket depth, our glue gap, our surface gap, our proper 60 degree V bit, and our proper clearance tool. We're now going to name the file and do something very important. You see where it says plug destination sheet? That has to be on the sheet we created for the plug because the software is going to generate a graphic as soon as we hit calculate. There it is. So now we have an auto-generated maple plug. We have our original walnut sheet, walnut pocket sheet that has our female pocket. And we are ready to, we're ready to cut this out. What I'm going to do is show you a preview of what the bits are going to do in the software, and then we'll see how it looks on the CNC. Here we are taking a look at the preview feature of Vectric. I'm going to select the walnut pocket or the main cutting board and the clearance tool path. The clearance tool path, as a reminder, was the 1 8 inch upcut. This is just getting rid of extra material that um, would take a long time for the V bit itself to remove. So our spiral upcut bit is doing its job here. I'm going to switch over to the V bit and show you how it cleans up. I do want to point out that here in the Vectric preview, I did the 1 8 inch spiral bit clearance pass first and then the V bit second. On the actual cutting board on the CNC, I will show you, I actually do the V bit tool path first. This presents any chip out, tear out, little small parts broken off. And then I will follow it up with the clearance tool path. Something else to remember when you're doing this preview in Vectric, it's very detailed, very accurate. So if something does not look right here, Make sure you fix it now because it will also not look right on your actual project if you don't get it corrected. Transitioning from the Vectric preview to the actual cut on the CNC, here I'm cutting the pocket tool path into the walnut cutting board. And this is using the V-bit. This will be followed up by the 1 8 inch upcut spiral for the clearance tool path. So to add a little context to this project and to continue on with my story, my wife and I actually met overseas in a, in a war zone. We met in Iraq in 2004. So projects like this that support veterans are just a small way we like to give back and remember those who served. Here you'll see I moved the file on the maple plug down to the bottom left hand corner. This is uh, just to save material. That top portion can be used for another project. This preview reset on the maple plug. We'll go ahead and take a look at the tool paths, starting first with the 1 8 inch clearance tool. Again, this is very evident on the uh, on the plug part of the file where the clearance tool is pretty important. It saves a ton of time by hogging out a lot of this material. It would take the V-bit forever to do this process. You're also going to notice that line right there. I put an offset on this to assist me. I'm going to use the CNC to cut this plug out of this whole entire piece of wood. So that's what this offset's for to give me a little bit of wiggle room to work that bit in there. Because this is a 1 8 inch bit, um, I went ahead and did the clearance path in two separate passes. I probably could have down, I think it goes down 
Like I said, that I think our plug depth was 0.25, so it's going down a quarter inch. Probably could have done it, but because it is in maple, I decided why rush it, why risk breaking a bit? So that's why this is doing it in two passes. And that's it for the clearance bit. So we're doing the V bit. This would be a little faster. Again, you see that offset around the outside and the V-bit's just cleaning up all these edges so this will fit perfectly into the pocket that we cut out earlier. Drop a comment below if you've ever donated a project for a special cause, or if you want to see more simple inlay tutorials just like this one. And here's the final step. I'm selecting that outside vector that I use. This is the half inch offset that I put around the entire graphic. I'm going to be using the same bit that I already have in the machine. It's an eighth inch spiral up cut, and I'm going to do a profile cut cutting all the way through the material and this will remove the plug so it can be inserted into the pocket. Just a quick note, I did add a juice groove to this cutting board. Uh, I didn't highlight that or discuss it in the vector walkthrough because the purpose of this video is about the inlay, um, but you will see it um, for the remainder of the video. All right, I'm gonna talk through the remaining steps in this project and probably fast forward fairly quickly because they're fairly self-explanatory. I look for any fuzzies or pieces that don't belong and do a quick dry fit. I can use a wire brush or some sandpaper or a sharp knife to clean up anything that doesn't need to be in there. Once I'm satisfied with the fit, I am going to do a quick dry run with the clamp. You can use whatever clamp you want. However, clamping pressure is pretty important to a successful outcome. So you can use any type of clamps you have. Just make sure the clamping pressure is adequate. satisfied with the dry run and the and the practice glue up it's time to flood both surfaces with glue I use tight bond 3 because this is a cutting board so you want that water resistance I should point out this walnut cutting board and the maple end grain plug material are sold as an inlay kit from CIC I'll put a link in the description for the cutting and close workshop it's also where I purchased the bits I used in this video Ryan runs a great company and I support them whenever I can.
There's several options to remove the plug material after the glue is set up. I chose to use my CNC with a quarter inch upcut bit. I uh, just did two passes, pocket tool path, removing all the material from the walnut base. All right, now using one of my new most favorite accessories for my Festool MFT, the Vacuum Dog. I held the cutting board down uh, with this little dog hole size vacuum pump and went to work on sanding. If you haven't seen my video on this, I'll try and figure out how to get a link. Uh, so you can click on it. I put a, did a whole video on this vacuum dog. It's fantastic. Uh, but anyway, I went on to sand. My process for cutting boards is almost always the same. Start with 80. I go to 100. I go to 120. I go to 150. I go to 180. Some may say that's overkill, but that's my process. After 180, I spritz the board with water, raise the grain, let it dry, sand again with 180, and that is where I stop for my sanding process. If you watch my cutting board finish shootout video, you will not be surprised to hear that my cutting board finish of choice is Osmo Top Oil. The application process is quite simple. I use a white 3M pad to apply three separate coats that have dried overnight, and there is nothing additional that I do. my first coat of finish, I realized I had overlooked cutting the finger grooves in the side of the cutting board. So I used my woodpecker's uh, finger groove bits in my router table and cut a groove in each side and was able to blend this in with the rest of the finish because I still had two coats of finish to apply. I made this cutting board as a donation for the upcoming Sergeant Alex Viola Memorial Event. This special event honors the memory of a fallen Special Forces hero, Staff Sergeant Alex Viola. It also raises funds to support veterans and their families. All proceeds from the auction go directly to programs that provide assistance to wounded veterans, support Gold Star families, and fund scholarships for students pursuing careers in service and technical trades. Our participation is annual and it's a small way for Madison Creations to give back and help make a difference in the lives of those who have served our country. There's a link below if you'd like more information on this event. Your support means the world to me, so please like and subscribe to help grow this community. Thank you for being here, and most importantly, let's always stand together in support of our veterans and their families. Right, that's going to look good. i just, why? Ah, use quarter inch. And we'll calculate. And why is that so busy? What in the, ah, biscuits. I know what happened. Dang it. Yep.